Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Anmol. In this channel, I make videos about productivity, philosophy, and psychology. My main goal is that you learn something new after watching any one of my videos. I'm actually talking about five films that have changed my perspective in life. Now, as you guys know, I'm a huge film nerd. I love films. I always love films. I believe film is a form of art and when done well and when directed and written and shot well, it just becomes a visual masterpiece that just can leave people thinking to the depths of their being, which is why I really wanted to make this list. This list was really hard to make. I could have easily gone with 20 films, but I just had to turn it down to five films. But if you haven't subscribed already, please do, you'll be supporting me heaps. Without further ado, let's start talking about five films that has completely changed my perspective in life. First film is called Ex Machina. This is a film that was directed and written in 2014 by Alex Garland. It's a sci-fi drama and a thriller film. Now, I remember seeing this film back in 2016 and I would say I watched it a year after that as well. And then I recently watched it. So I've seen it like three times. I constantly think about the ramifications and the consequences of artificial intelligence and technology and just human beings evolving and creating things that just keep evolving. Now, I remember watching this Joe Rogan podcast a while back. I don't remember the specific episode or anything like that because I've just seen so many of his episodes. And one of the episodes he was talking about the human beings fascination with AI and always wanting the best and creating the next iPhone and creating the next best laptop and creating advanced cameras. But at what point will we stop and at what point will we succumb to the consequences of technology? And I feel like this film is so relevant right now, Ex Machina, especially with all that's happening with the metaverse and Mark Zuckerberg's decision to create a virtual reality world. I feel like we're still in the very early stages of the metaverse, but as the years progress, it will only grow and grow and grow. Now, in my interpretation, how I would summarize the story is that the young programmer whose name is Caleb, he's been invited by Nathan, who is the CEO of the company Caleb works for. Now, as the days goes on, Caleb ends up participating in strange experiments with Ava that Nathan has created. Now, I won't say more as I don't really want to spoil anything else because the film is just so, so, so good. It shows you the ever-growing dangers of modern day technology. And this film came out like seven years ago, but seven years from now, I mean, technology just is changing so quick at such a rapid rate that who knows at what point will we get to a stage when AI will get really, really smart or it'll get in the wrong hands. That idea or that argument always arises with anything new. And I'm sure everyone's heard of that argument, but it's just something that I really fear. Now, the second film is called Requiem for a Dream. It's a film that's directed by Darren Aronofsky. This is the same guy who did um, Pi, which is a really, really eccentric film. I recently just watched it with a friend. He also did Black Swan, which is basically one of my favorite psychological horror films and the way that Aronofsky tells the story, his cinematography, his writing style, his screenplay is just impeccable. Um, according to IMDB, the film is about four drug-induced Coney Island people, which I'm assuming is a place in America, as their dreams are shattered when their addictions run deep. And the film basically shows an incremental destruction of oneself chasing something pleasurable. Now, as the story progresses, the events become much more darker. A lot of people have willingly chosen not to watch this film because they've just heard some messed up things about it. It's not really gory. There are a few gory scenes, but overall the film shows me how far someone can go um, to feed their addictions. And when people usually think about the word addiction, they think about drugs. But for me, addictions is also other things, pornography, overeating, unhealthy diets. Everyone's addicted to something. I myself am addicted to, let's say coffee, but someone who's addicted to coffee, in my opinion, isn't as bad when compared to someone who's addicted to a really hardcore drug or even cigarettes or heavy, heavy drinking. Now, obviously, if someone drinks five to six coffees a day, that's really bad. And yes, you should definitely work on coming back off that. I don't drink that much, thank God, um, but Generally speaking, the film shows me what severe addiction can do to a person. It shows me a deep dive into each character's psyche and how they rely on external gratification. It's a very messed up film. Not everyone can stomach it. I watched it with my girlfriend once as well and a good friend of mine. Um, my girlfriend really, really liked it, but decided never to watch that film again. 
I've seen that film three, four times and every time I watch that film, I'm just fascinated by it. Requiem for a Dream, it's definitely a great watch and it's one of Aronofsky's best works. For me, the film resembles what happens when we externally rely on validations and external gratifications to a point where we are willing to sacrifice our own sanity. Number three, The Blair Witch Project. Now this film is one of my favorite horror films ever made. I don't know why I'm speaking like that. Um, horror films are one of my favorite genre. I don't think horror gets the recognition it deserves. It doesn't require that much effort to make a really bad horror film. Just put in some bad acting, some cheap jump scares in there, some cheap thrills, a ghost or a demon, and you got yourself an average horror film. There are a lot of really, really good horror films, and for me, they scare me to the depth of my being. They tell me what humans can be capable of. They tell me what uncertainty does to a certain person. There's a lot of symbolism in horror, deeper than what a ghost represents, what a spirit represents in someone. Blair Witch Project was a 1999 horror film that came out. Uh, it's predominantly horror, but it's also something else, which I'll get to soon. It was directed by Daniel Merrick and Eduardo Sanchez. I'm hoping I'm not butchering that name. According to IMDb, the film depicts three students that vanish after traveling into a Maryland forest to film a documentary on the local Blair Witch legend, leaving only their footage behind. The, the film is obviously just a found footage that is being played that shows these three students that went to the forest to research about this Blair Witch uh, for a school project, I think it was. But there's a deeper meaning in the film that I have attached myself to a lot and I always mention it to someone when I'm actually talking about horror films. The perspective that I've extracted from this film is the aspect of uncertainty. Now, let me just quickly get into that. But before I do that, let me just also say that when I was watching this film, or when I watched this film for the first time, I was also finishing off one of my English assignments, which was on a gothic genre, gothic horror, completely different um, to normal horror. And one of the famous gothic horror writers, her name was Anne Radcliffe. In her essay, which was titled On the Supernatural of Poetry, wrote the difference between terror and horror. Now, for a lot of people, terror and horror are the same thing. If you tell someone what this, what's terror, they'll be like, oh, it's something scary and this, this, this. Same as horror. It's, it's a very generic term that you people usually um, say when you ask them these questions. And for a while, I used to do the same thing. Now, Radcliffe said this quite interesting difference or this dichotomy between terror and horror. Terror is that feeling of dread and feeling of anxiety. It's that feeling of apprehension at the possibility of something scary happening. And horror is the reaction of that fearful thing that you were scared about. For me, Blair Witch Project is probably 90% terror and 10% horror. Throughout the whole film, and this might spoil it a little bit for some people, you never really see the witch. And, and there is a witch. I mean, there are weird things that happen throughout the film that signify that yes, there is something fishy going on in the woods as the story uh, incrementally progresses, but nothing happens. <laughs> nothing genuinely happens. I mean, something happens in the end, but I won't tell you guys if you wanna go watch that film but nothing actually happens. It's all left to our imagination. The writers of this film were so clever when they wrote this that they never show anything. There's a deeper philosophical meaning in this. As Seneca said, who was a famous Stoic philosopher, we suffer more in our imagination than we do in our reality. And yes, in, our, in their reality, there was a witch. In our reality, there isn't. But I think we still suffer a lot in our imagination. And I've also in the past created scenarios in my head that 98% of the time don't end up happening. Or even if they happen, they don't end up happening the way I imagined it to be. This is what the filmmakers wanted us to believe though. They wanted us to make scenarios in our head that would, uh, create a certain witch. A lot of times in horror films, you actually genuinely see the spirit or the malevolent evil spirit or the creature or the human who's about to kill someone who's possessed, whatever. You don't see the witch. So for me, the perspective that I extract from this film is the aspect of uncertainty. The film taught me to realize that whatever things that I imagine in my head, most of the time, they never actually end up happening. I just think The Blair Witch Project is a great, great horror film and I think everyone should watch it. That's the perspective I extracted. Let me know what you actually thought about the film. Number four, Shutter Island. Now, this film came out in 2010. It was directed by Martin Scorsese. It stars Leonardo DiCaprio and it also stars Mark Ruffalo, which are both really good actors. 
For me, and this might sound like a big call and might be actually a big call for some people, I think it's my favorite Martin Scorsese film. I might get a lot of hate on that. People will always say Casino, Goodfellas, even Raging Bull. Shadow Island, when I first watched it, I was like, okay, this is really good. But then I watched it like five years later. I'm like, okay, this is amazing. But then I watched it another two years after that. And I'm like, holy crap, this film is crazy. Now the film taught me the perspective of guilt. And guilt is a human emotion. We have all felt guilt at a certain aspect in our life. We've either done something that's made us feel guilty or we know something that we haven't said that made us feel guilty as well. I mean, the whole film is not just about guilt. There are so many other crazy concepts that happen throughout the film. And it is genuinely one of the best films ever made. One of my favorite films ever made. DiCaprio is just awesome in it. There's this dialogue that happens in the film. I won't tell you guys when, just watch it if you haven't seen it. But if you've seen this film, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And this is when DiCaprio is talking to Mark Ruffalo and he says that which would be worse to live as a monster or die as a good man now I don't want to wreck it as usual I don't want to spoil this film for anyone who hasn't seen it but this line in itself tells me how far um, someone will go not to feel guilty again and people usually don't think about the aspect of guilt I think it's a human emotion that I personally don't feel a lot but I have felt I think there are other common emotions that a lot of other people do feel more than guilt. Now, a person's sense of guilt usually relates to their moral code and everyone has a different moral code. Shadow Island is basically one of my favorite films ever made. And like I said, it's not just about guilt, but that's one huge perspective that I extract from this movie. And I definitely think everyone should watch this film. The last film that I would want to mention is a film called I Saw the Devil. And it's actually not a horror film, even though it might sound like a horror film. It's a South Korean action thriller film that's directed by Ji Won Kim. In, in basically a quick summary, the film is about a secret agent whose wife gets murdered by this guy. After the murder happens, a secret agent goes on, on a personal manhunt to find and get revenge for the killer who killed his wife. The secret agent finds his wife's killer and then I'm like, okay, he's found him now. The film's not even finished yet. Okay, so he's probably gonna do something now and then he's probably gonna escape for a bit and then he's gonna just catch him again or something will happen. He brutally abuses the killer. He bashes him to death and he lets him go. And I said to myself, why is he doing that? What is the reason behind that? But then he catches him the second time and he lets him go again. And then it happens again. He catches him this the third time and he lets him go again. But every time he catches him, he brutally attacks him and incrementally damages him physically. And it also gets to a point where the film becomes mentally torturing for the antagonist, the actual serial killer who killed um, the secret agent's wife. The film is an excellent portrayal on revenge. The secret agent is so obsessed with getting revenge for his wife that he would like to incrementally and slowly torture the killer by catching him and then letting him go catching him and then letting him go and yeah the film just gave me a quite a few perspectives on the aspect of revenge and there was this quote that i read as well and when i was watching this film it actually made me think about it and the quote goes something like to beat a monster you have to become a monster and it just kind of blew my mind the whole concept of the film now i won't go into too much obviously because something cool not something cool, but something crazy happens towards the end. After he gets his final act of revenge, something happens to his own character as well, the secret agent. Um, it's just an excellent concept of film. I've seen a lot of films of revenge, but I Saw the Devil was a completely different film. It's a film like I've never seen before, and it completely changed my concept on the aspect of revenge. And it was just an excellent film. I highly recommend watching I Saw the Devil. I always loved films and I always will love films ever since I was a child. And these films, all these five films have given me certain perspectives in my life and just made me think a certain way. Please make sure to subscribe and support me. I'll appreciate that a lot. Appreciate the support. And until next time, thank you so much, guys.